How's it going guys and welcome to the Stanley Parable. Now this is an old game or an older game, but I've never really played it, but I've always heard really good things about it. So I want to try it. So let's play. Begin. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. 427, Employee say? number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the key. Ooh, exciting. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. That's a and super boring job. considered it soul winding Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Was he? Or was and he And then not? one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Oh. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Why can't I stay here and use my computer? Can't I just type it in? Can I go on, like, the internet? Eh, uh, probably not. It is MS-DOS. Is there anybody here? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The meeting room. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. No, they're not here. Where am I supposed to go? Oh wait, they already told me. So I know this game is based on uh, choices and stuff like that. So I might do two playthroughs. The first playthrough is actually going to be uh, doing what um, the narrator tells me to do. Just to make it so I know what side I'm going for. Uh, there's literally like nobody here. No, they can't even close a freaking drawer. Yeah, jackasses. Ooh, a painting. Uh, hello? Is anybody here? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. My left or your left? I'll go this way. 413. The computers are still on, but nobody's home. Door's locked. Hello? Do not alter... Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I was talking, you jackass. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. There's a whiteboard manager? Wow. That's a loser. <laughs> Do I? Can I touch this one? Because it said over there. Oh. Everyone is unique. Yes, they are. You, most of all. Aww. Isn't that nice? Broom closet. Ow. I got hit in the head. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Can I have this broom? I want the broom. Hello? Broom! I'm there not nothing leaving. nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Yes, there is, because I don't want to leave. Close the door. Sucker! It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. <laughs> he wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> uh, what do you know? I could be doing something in here. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? 
Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Uh-huh. Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm I'm genuinely confused. Um because I wanna. Is that a good enough reason? You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? Yes. If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I None? never would have thought to mention it. None? None whatsoever. So nothing in here? Nothing I can Maybe take. To you, this is somehow its own branching path. <laughs> Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, "Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? <laughs> the broom closet ending was my favorite." I hope your friends find this concerning. Ah, oh, so there's nothing. Fine. You dick. Making me feel bad. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. All right. I'll do what you told me to. That's not his office. Whoa. Which way is his office? This is his office? Oh, this got to be his office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was mm -hmm. that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. Oh, yeah? And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Ah. Two, eight, four, five. But Two. of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Two, eight, four, five. Two, eight. There you go. Two, eight, four. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumb. <laughs> Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was two, eight, four, five. Two, eight, four, five. Uh -huh. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad. Knowing full well, two, eight, four, five. <laughs> Nothing? Fine. Two, eight, four, five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly oh. opened passageway. Whoa, what's in here? Lots of noise. I can't see, it's so dark. I can't see. I'm literally blind. Is it? Can I go this way? I don't want to go down. I want to go in the darkness. Everybody hold your breath. I don't know where I'm going. I literally have no clue where I'm at. All right, there's nothing over here. <laughs> I literally can't see anything. Press the button. I was gonna say, this is the world's slowest elevator. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. How do you know? Oi! Hey! Someone shut the power off! I don't like the dark! The dark scares me! Stanley Ooh. walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Do I have to? That doesn't look very inviting. Ooh. Ah, oh, I said I'd do what he said. Damn! <laughs> Why do I have to do what he says? What's this? A big button? Button. 
The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this Whoa. place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Yes. Because I like TV. T oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see this one. I was too busy looking at the TV. Uh, is that a microwave? Mm, microwave burrito. No. Where do I go now? Oh, there's a button. A camera button. Now the monitors Whoa. jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Whoa. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Uh, nope. So I'm right here somewhere. Is that mine? I can't tell. They all look the same. That is freaky. Oh, where am I? Right there. Four, two, seven. That's me. Now go back to the thing so I can see. There it is. Yep, that's my office. My beautiful planned office. What's this? Uh, Superman button. Press the Superman button. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Apparently so. Why does that guy get a damn... Hey, employee number 293 had a nice chair. Where the hell's my nice chair? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Whoa. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Yes. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Uh, yeah, because everybody does. Ha! Ah. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Can I turn it on? Eh, yeah. No, I can't turn it on. Where do I go? Buttons? Oh. I pressed a button. It didn't do anything. I can't see. Oh, that's missed. What about this button? What's this green button? Go. Isn't green using go? It's not going anywhere. These buttons don't have anything. They're all not lit up. Can I go up here? Five. Oh. Uh. There's all kinds of buttons. Uh, oh. Mind control idle awaiting input. Oh, can I go down there and press it? What are the buttons all here for? I want to press buttons. Buttons! Buttons! Press the buttons! Obviously I'm not doing anything though. Oh, what's this? There's one like glowing right here. Oh. Console disabled. There's a number one, so one. Two. Where's three? Three. Um. What's the button up there? One, two. That's four. Where's three? Where is button three? Oh, is it over here? Oh, I think I seen. I think I found number three. I don't know if this is gonna do anything, but we'll try it anyway. Three. My pants make a nice ruffling sound. <laughs> and four. Oh, wait, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, damn it. Where's number five? Wasn't it over there by the door? Where was the door? Oh, oh there it is. I found it. I found it. 
Hopefully it does something. If not, it's a big waste of time. Nothing. Alright. Screw you. Look at the fucking size of this. This is the size of monitor I want. Can you imagine how cool that would be? Now this is virtual reality for the olden age. <laughs> and when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. On, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. I gotta do the off. Oop. I shot it off. Now everything's black. I can't see it. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. Whoa. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet... Even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. As soon as it gets out of my way, there you go. Oi. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Beat the game! Woo! Oh, we're back in our house. Our house. <laughs> we're back in our office. Now what? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No. Go no matter here. how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I don't remember this being here. Unless I was just losing my mind. Okay, there's nothing else. So let's do the opposite this time. We did exactly what he told us to. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. Fuck you, I'm going opposite. Fuck this off! This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay, let's go admire it. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Ah. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Can I drink some of this? I want to drink a pop. Uh, wait. No? Jimmy. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room it is. so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. It is. Oh, it's so beautiful. Ah, just sit here and relax. Who at needs people? Point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected <laughs> poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Hey, that's not fair. I'll take that back. I'll punch you. I'll punch you. Ah. Sit back down. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, 
He decided that the game was trying to send him a message. Okay. Let's go. What's that? But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Oh, yeah? First open door on the left? What do you mean that one? Fuck off. <laughs> Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> yeah, I don't take direction from you. Shut up! Penalty for misuse of cargo lift. Thousand dollars? Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. Five thousand dollars? Shouldn't it say death? <laughs> Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who's her? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Who? Who's been waiting? Who? Darkness? Ugh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Okay. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, <laughs> filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Yes. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You I actually unplugged it. chose incorrectly. I, know. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here. <laughs> Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music nope. comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're what? not Stanley. Yes, You're I am. a real person. <sighs> <sighs> well, I'm a real boy. I'm so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you have made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though <laughs> you've completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making no. in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. No, fuck off. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But real if used person. incorrectly can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. <laughs> Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Or Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice you saying, stink. My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. A back sack and crack? Practice? Practice makes perfect. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? Nope. 
And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the Thanks. feeling should subside. Oh. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. I wasn't paying attention. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. More charts. I want to answer the phone. Can I answer the phone now? Everything's all messed up. Where am I supposed to go now there, uh, narrator dude? Can I go up here? B1. No. Fine. I'll go this way. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. <laughs> Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That I was story would make no new. sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. No. I want to jump off. I don't want to do this job no more. Damn it. What's this? I don't have a key card. Fine, we'll go this way. And this way? No, nope, can't go that way. Where am I going now? Hello? My nice room. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. I don't wanna. I don't wanna! Don't make me. I don't want to do it right. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This is left, right? No! Why did you do <laughs> that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. What the hell happened? This place is warped. Fine. Ugh. Oh, I guess you just want me to go in this door. Anything? Oh, here's a room. Uh, oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story, you've destroyed my work. Why? <laughs> For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. Blah, blah, blah. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have do to. Do gir everywhere. I have everywhere. to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Whoa! Okay. Um, what the hell? I thought you said you were shutting it down. Up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. <laughs> you. You. You were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you yeah. think that would be funny? You just uh, had to see? Yeah. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? No. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. <laughs> that thought hadn't even I occurred he's a little to mad you, mate. That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. No, I'm not. Oh, my story. 
If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. What? Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All, All right. right, I'll do it this time. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Ah, uh, left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my okay. lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. The left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry. <laughs> what is it, loop Speed now? Exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll fine. be fine. Fine! Right. I'll do the <clears throat> friggin' left. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he yeah, entered yeah, yeah. the door on his left. Fine. You bastard, making me do stuff right. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh, look, they blocked Coming it off. To the staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. They forced me to go up. <laughs> nope. They're locking me out. They won't let me do it. What the hell? Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of what any human the? life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He oh. drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. <gasps> Run away. Press the buttons. Computer. Nothing. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. Why is there a panda? Into the receiver. Right there on the wall. Why is there a panda with a gun? That makes no sense. The wall, you say? Hello? I'm Night sorry, Hawk. is there a problem? You didn't Oops. mishear me, did you? Please no. speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Yeah? Ugh. Look how blurry that is. Ugh. Ugh. Blurry! Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. <laughs> why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. Oh, he's mad. When what the... When came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? I'm up here now. What? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Uh, Stanley, please. Like an out of body experience? I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? What? Is, is that the end? Right? Stanley, this is important. Oh! The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Oh, 
Do Uh-oh. something. Anything? Anything. <laughs> this is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, oh. you hear me? No, you sorry. There? You're listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, oh. I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. He's sad. That's all I right. feel bad for him. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. I can't even leave. All right, there, guys. That is the Stanley Parable. There are a couple more uh, things you can do, but for the majority of it, that is good. That is a cool game. I love the narration in that game because it really makes you feel like he's actually talking directly to the player, which is awesome. Anyway, there, guys. If you like the video, click the like and subscribe button. And until the next video, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.